The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. All right, Jared Butler, Epe Udo in the opening segment, not bad, and we appreciate both of them. Jared, with the emotions being cleared by the NBA, Epe, a part of the Nigerian Olympic team, as he mentioned, as his career is winding down, his first appearance in the Olympic Games. And then someone who's been in the studio a few times, Lisa Adams, co-producer, co-director uh, of the, uh, the, the documentary, behind-the-scenes documentary, and it will eventually be right in front of your face, Ode to Joy. Production time, and, and uh, Lisa Adams joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Ha, can you, I, I mean, you shot hours upon hours. Yes. I've Hello. seen, hey, yes. good to have you back. Great to hear you again, Lisa. It, it, how how big of an undertaking, honestly, was this, and, and uh, how's it coming along? To be honest, when you say hours, it, that is exactly the way to put it. it we have been spending so much time to put this in perspective we interviewed 30 different people and every single interview was minimum two hours so just let alone that amount of time talking to people hearing their stories and then contextualizing it for all of you it is a huge undertaking but i have to admit it has been one of the biggest honors of my life to be able to tell this story but everything that goes into it for every interview conducting every interview we're in a really great spot right now as we are, you know, we're done with the interviews and now we're transitioning into really putting this, this story together, which is a really, really fun spot to be. How much did you, did you know going in and how much do you like to know about a subject before you go in so that you can do it as deep a dive as you guys like to do? So I think for this one, it was, the, the story was so, it, it was almost laid out for us when we got, when we got to Waco. So we knew the beginning, the story, right? The scandal was where we were going to start it all because that really is where Coach Drew's story story starts at Baylor. And then m- moving along, we were like, all right, we got to figure out what makes Coach Drew so so special. Why did he win the national championship? So I would say I we research a lot. A lot of time is put into different interviews, but there are some things that you can't find out until you're right in front of the person. And that's where... Um, it gets exciting because you hear one person say something and you're like, Oh my gosh, I have to go and ask this person this, this question now, because it's this, this story that just has so many different angles and and intertwined so much. So a lot of research is done, but a lot of it comes down to, you know, really listening to what the people have to say when they're right in front of you and, um, and diving deeper on what you can tell they're excited about, why they're excited about this story and um, and what's really going to resonate with everyone that's eventually going to watch this film. Lisa, had you ever interacted with Scott Drew before? And, and if not, uh, what were your impressions in hearing him not only discuss, <laughs> you know, a great triumph, but also discuss, you know, some bad moments as well and, and always managing to be the most positive person in the room while doing so? What was cool about um, meeting him is, no, I had not met him before I came to Waco is every single thing that people said about him prior to meeting him was spot on. <laughs> Everyone has such a consistent um, caricature of him is a good way to put it. And he's just the kindest, most positive person. And you're right. It, it's not always easy as, as a producer walking into a room and asking people about some really, really hard times. And some people deal with it better than others. And, and coach Drew was, incredible and I had the opportunity to not only meet him but um his dad Homer his his brother and sister Bryce Dana and I would say I got such a similar vibe from that whole family so it it, it's not just it's not just Scott I think it's it's a Drew thing (laughs) yeah yeah no it is there's no question about it and of course uh, Chris Charles Scott right there with you you guys have been in same locations different locations at, at, at some point, were there two or three recordings going on at one time? Yeah, so we actually had a couple of different crews while we were in Waco. So we were um, interviewing multiple people um, in a day with two different crews, which was really exciting, but very intense because we had to coordinate 
who was going to be where, when, who was covering what interviews, making sure that we got all of the additional shots that we needed while we were there, whether that be B-roll, photos. And so it was quite the undertaking. Um, and we spent a whole week in Waco, which was, for me, just just such a great way to really understand and get to know the city. But then we flew to other locations, too. So we flew to um, Phoenix, Dallas. I flew to Chicago to talk to Jared Butler, which... Um, what a stand-up guy. That was an incredible interview to hear his perspective of what it was like to win the national championship with Coach Drew. But, yeah, we, as a team, we've had to work really hard to make sure we've gotten all all the interviews we've needed in different locations, and um, it, it really came together quite beautifully. And it, it, it's clear that we're supposed to tell this story, which is, is a great feeling from our perspective, and I'm sure it is from – um, everyone that loves Baylor's. Some of the video, by the way, as Lisa's talking, and what, not of the studio with us, but it's, it's the, the time-lapse video of all of things that have been shot, oh, the yes. setup. It's, it's incredible. It really, really is. And that's just a small portion of what we did because we had some other crews out there. So that time-lapse is excellently shows one crew and what they did during this project. So... Um, it, it gives you a fun perspective, though, of what it looks like when we get to a location, what it takes to find the right shot. And we're interviewing people in so many different areas and locations that you try to find a cohesive look for the whole film. And that's a whole nother challenge is um, making sure you're getting the interviewees in the place, right place at the right time. But then also, how are we going to frame these people? How are we going to make their interview um, really tell a story within the larger picture of what this is. How long do you think this is going to be? Do you know yet? So, yeah, so we are looking at um, doing actually two different episodes around an hour to an hour and 15 for both. So originally when we flew down to Waco, which was our, our first set of interviews or yeah, interviews, we thought it would be a, a one ninety minute film feature, but we got so many good interviews and such good content. We we are thinking at this point, now clearly things change in this industry, but at this point we're thinking we're going to be able to split it into two different um, episodes, which is exciting. It's, you know, it's good that we have more than we need coming out of it. Lisa, and that is great that you've got so much content. Was there anything that was uh, surprising or, or maybe just stuck with you that you heard uh, through the interview process uh, about this story? Oh, boy. I I had so many great interviews, but there is one that really stuck out to me. And this was, this was interesting to me. Um, I interviewed Larry Gatewood and Tommy Bowman, former players, um, at HOC, which was very fun to see. Uh And then being able to tell the story from being previous players and then them watching the Baylor men's Baylor basketball program throughout time, that really struck a chord with me. It showed how invested they still are, even though they were players back in the 60s. And they've been able to um, connect with Coach Drew Larry Gatewood cried when they talked about Mark Vidal graduating and being baptized. And I think that was one of my moments during that week where I was like, wow, like this is an incredible story. This is going to connect with people far beyond the Baylor community, far beyond Waco and Texas, Texas itself, because it's a story that um, like is it, so in- incredible in so many ways. You know, I can't agree more because one of the things we tried to do, this this team was special. You knew that from the beginning, even at the end of last year. But we tried to bring back as many former players who, whether they had been around uh, at 50 years, whatever, Bowman, you mentioned him, obviously uh, many others, coaches and players, it, it, to a man, to a man, mm-hmm. am I right, guys? To mm-hmm. a man, everybody was absolutely all on board, thrilled for everybody. And even better, like you said, Lisa, they all felt connected because Scott right. Drew was able to do that as well. And I think what's really a, a theme that I kept on hearing in all interviews from day one of being there was people genuinely feel, they feel like they are part of the Baylor family. And I feel like that is something that is so unique 
about this program compared to some maybe around the nation is that it, that's just that like regardless of wh- who you are within the program even some of the super fans that we interviewed like Sarah Rogers Chris Fuente they they said we feel like we're a part of the family we're a part of this win we're a part of this uh, national championship which is like wow there it's, it's not there's no ego there's no pride from the team being like oh we won this no 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 it's the fans are a part of it. Um, the past players are a part of it. Tweedy, Tweedy Carter helped pave the way for this program, being one of the first major recruits that Coach Drew got. Um, he he felt a part of this win, and that's pretty special. That 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 doesn't come around all the time. And, so and, and he broke um, down. That was good to see. He broke down, right, Tweedy? Oh yeah. 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 We had there a were, Go ahead. There were multiple people that, that that cried when talking about this national championship and what it took to get here, and that 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 really shows they're willing to to put their guard down and and talk freely about the experience it's been and how hard and how great it has been. An ode to joy is the name of the documentary. It will be released sometime this fall. Uh, again, about Baylor men's basketball, but much more than just the basketball national championship. Craig? So, yeah, so the, the Ode to Joy, I like that nickname. And obviously, Scott Drew has, has talked, uh, you know, so much about the culture of joy that they have within the basketball program. What did you learn about the culture of joy uh, while going through this process? And I think you, you kind of referenced it there a little bit, just the emotions involved with these players. But it being right. more than a slogan, or just a, a catchy phrase as opposed to actually, no, that's actually what the program's about. Right. It, I quickly learned it's a way of life. It's not, it, it's a phrase that grounds you and reminds you on how you need to interact while, when you're on the basketball court, um, in your day-to-day life. Um, it, it, it's something that brings you back to what, what this really is all about. I numerous occasions saw that, yeah, basketball is awesome and that's, why that's what brings that team together that's what brings the coaches together but being a good person and putting in jesus and your teammates before yourself is really what matters and is more important than basketball at the end of the day and um that was that was great to see i mean chatting with jared butler he um he taught sunday school and i was like oh do you have any video of that by chance we'd love to use it in the documentary and he said Oh no, I did that like totally low key. Like no one knew I was doing that actually. And I was like, wow, like that just shows these, these players, these kids are, are learning how to give back to their community, how to live their day, day to day life with this, um, this phrase of, of joy as well as, as showing that on the court. So that was, that was cool to see. And it, it's not just a phrase used for encouragement. It's a phrase used to revolve their whole lives around. Lisa, uh, the uh, the final question I have is that you have all this now in front of you, and you're going to do a couple of different, uh, I guess, uh, a documentary, a couple of different uh, as parts of the series. How in the world, and where is everybody now? Because the technology, you could be in three different states or nine different <laughs> states or whatever. But how do you how how do you wrap your arms around this? And, and, and where are you in that process? Yeah, so we all are actually in different places at this point, but we will come together to eventually put the, put the film together and edit it. But um, I think throughout the whole, the whole week we were in Waco, it, all of us saw the story come together. And so now it's taking everyone's different perspectives and views and essentially putting them in buckets, right? right. Putting um, what one person had to say about this in this bucket and then finding um, a different different thought process or different opinion and putting it in that same bucket and weaving it all together. So it's been, it's been cool to see this story so um, clearly come to all of us on the team, I would say, especially um, Chris Scott, who's our leader, and he's a visionary. He, he's so good at what he does. So um, we are now in the process of getting all the footage sent to a system where it will be put in there for us to be able to weave together. So that should be coming up in the next month or so. We'll be we'll be cranking this thing out and we'll have a rough edit here within the next next month or so. So it's exciting. This is the this is the fun part. This is where we really get to put the story together.
Yeah, you guys are incredible. It was amazing just being here. Paul and I were here for those couple of hours in the studio. And Jack, I think you were here too, weren't you, right? I'm not sure if Marquise, Emma, or Hayden. I know Armstrong was around as well. Thank you so much for your time. We'll try to have you on again when we get closer, of along with, with Chris and, and even a couple of others. Uh, how many people behind the scenes are there? Oh, boy. So there is a core team of us that have been kind of leading this. So it'd be Chris, Alan, and I, and Chris J, who is our director of photographer, and Rob, and uh, he was also there um, as our assistant director of photographer. So the five of us really led those interviews in Waco, but a couple of other people have, have stepped in to help as well. Like Damon was great. He led our second crew while in Waco. So collectively, I want to say people jumping in and out with different roles throughout this probably about about 10 people yep. but there's a core group that's really working on this um from the beginning to the end which is going to be i'm going to cry when it comes out oh i think <laughs> a lot of, i think yeah I it's think been a, an emotional process in the best way lisa thank you very much appreciate you guys thank and what you you're so doing much. thank you sickum 365.com the a documentary ode an ode to joy about the Baylor men's basketball national championship. And yes, many other stories about Baylor athletics history and also interviews with those who played many, many, many decades ago. When we come back, uh, no Mac Rhodes again this week. He's out.